Welcome back to another episode of the Even Your Dynasty Show. We have action. The Giants have traded Mitch Haniger, Anthony DiSclefani, and $6 million to the Seattle Mariners in exchange for left-handed starting pitcher Robbie Ray. Uh, many are familiar in the NL West here of his time with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, he also won a Cy Young in 2021 with the Toronto Blue Jays and has been with Seattle the last two years. Unfortunately, only made one start last year through about three innings and required Tommy John surgery. So he ended up missing the rest of the season. He is not slated to be coming back until after the All-Star break this coming season and he will be under contract for two more years um, beyond that. Uh, so kind of the implications of this deal, uh, Mitch Haniger, they they're getting his deal off the books. Anthony Scafani, he only had one more year, but they got him off the books this year. Frankly, I've been saying Anthony Scafani needs to be DFA'd. So just, getting someone to take his deal is kind of an added bonus in my book. Um, they are sending $6 million. So for 2024, the money was even. Um, Robbie Ray is going to make $23 million and it just kind of even the money out for this season. So they essentially just dumped, you know, they just even swapped him for 2024. Uh, going into next year, um, Robbie Ray's deal has uh, opt out. After this season, seems highly unlikely that he would actually exercise that opt out, uh, given that he's not going to be coming back until probably after the All Star break. So he might make like ten starts this year. So I mean, barring just an incredible run of starts and then like a great playoff run or something like that, I just don't see any universe in which he opts out because he's slated to make twenty five million dollars in each of twenty twenty five and twenty twenty six. So I don't think he's going to have enough of an opportunity to show enough this season to really justify opting out of two years and $50 million. So he will likely be here uh, for the next three years. Um, I think this is overall, I like this deal. I think it makes a lot of sense uh, for kind of for both sides. I know the Mariners have been looking to get out of his deal. And, you know, there's a lot of familiarity for Mitch Haniger in Seattle, and he's loved in Seattle by their fans, uh, has a lot of, you know, a lot of big moments with that franchise. So hitting him, sure, it'll be, he'll, he has got a lot of comfort there. So, you know, good for Mitch Haniger. Kind of, he had a rough go last year, never really got healthy and had a real shot to like produce. Um, you know, when you miss all of spring training, uh, he kind of puts you behind the eight ball and then he finally got going and he broke his arm and missed 12 more weeks. So, you know, I wish he could have done more with the giants, but you know, I think it's an overall, it's a good deal for both sides. So, but we're going to focus on Robbie Ray since he's the one coming in and that's going to be what we're taking a look at here. So uh, some things about Robbie Ray, he's got a career three, nine, six ERA. He's got an 11.03 Ks per nine, 3.81 walks per nine, and 1.38 home runs per nine in his career. So that, you know, that's something that he struggles with. He's definitely a guy that has struggled to keep the ball in the park in his career. So pitching an Oracle could benefit him in that respect. Um, he's been a guy that at one point he actually had the highest case per like career case per nine of any pitcher in the history of baseball, which is kind of amazing. Um, I don't know if that's sustainable and, you know, with him coming off Tommy John surgery, it's, that's certainly a risk. So something to keep in mind, he's a four pitch guy, fastball slider or his bread and butter. Um, his fastball is usually between 93 and 97 when he reaches back on it. Um, it's a very good fastball. Gets a lot of swing and misses. He throws it about 60% of the time. Has a hard slider that's about 89 on average, 88, 89. Um, he throws that usually 30 plus percent of the time. And then he'll also mix, it, uh, mix in a change up and curveball that he'll throw on occasion. But mainly a fastball slider guy. Um, it, he has improved his walks per nine in recent years. Um, so that is something to keep in mind also, 
that in the last two seasons, full seasons, I should say, I'm not really going to count 2023 because he only threw three innings. But in 2021 and 2022, uh, his walks per nine had actually been cut down to 2.42 one year, and I think it was 2.95 the other year. So, you know, he's been a strike thrower in his last couple of years, and he's thrown over 185 to 190 innings each of those seasons as well. So, uh, but he can be a bit of a workhorse and get you a lot of innings, which I value kind of becoming something that less and less people seem to value. But I think after watching last season where the rotate where the pitching staff kind of imploded down the stretch, probably from over, especially in the bullpen, probably from overuse all season long, where they were doing opener games and bullpen games all season long. There were a lot of people like me that were saying, this is going to, you know, the bill comes due at some point. If you keep, running these bullpen games, it's going to come due. And it did. And it, unfortunately in August and September, they just pretty much imploded in the pen. So it, I value innings out of your starting pitchers. Um, I, I think that's something they have to do this year is get guys that are going to give you more length. Now Ray isn't going to really help you in 2024 in that regard, at least not until the second half, but I think for the following two years, you know, he has upside there. And that's part of what I like with this deal is you're dumping two guys and getting at least a pitcher with upside. Um, you know, the negative is he is coming off Tommy John and you never know how they're going to recover. A lot of guys come back stronger. It's his first one. It's his first kind of like major injury in his career. So, you know, we'll see how he responds to that and how he recovers, but overall, I, I view it as a lot of upside with this trade. Um, and then the other part of this trade that I do like is you essentially cleared two roster spots making this move, because the reality is Robbie Ray is going to be on the injured list for probably the 60-day IL for much of the season, so you're going to have that spot. And by getting rid of DeSclafani and Hanniger, you just created two roster spots. Well, also, what you did there is you kind of addressed, you, you know, you addressed the log jam in the outfield where they had really four guys for the two corner spots. You know, Jung Hu Lee is going to play center field, but between Slater, Hanniger, Conforto, and Yaz, you had four guys kind of occupying two outfield spots that didn't leave any room for the kids. And by getting rid of Hanniger, you know, two of your best outfield prospects that are close to ready or ready, depending on how you, how you view them are going to be Elliot Ramos and Luis Matos, who are both right-handed hitters. So getting rid of Hanniger, who was probably going to take significant playing time last year, opens up a spot for those guys. Now you can also kind of play Conforto more in a DH role, which I think they're going to do more of this year to help create more time in the outfield. And then listening to Zaidi speak after the game, you know, Ramos was a name that he brought up a bunch of times during the, uh, during the interview. So, it, you know, he didn't close the door on either acquiring another outfielder. I, I know I'm going to, I'm a big proponent for bringing in Cody Bellinger, not only because he can play, you put him in right field, but you can put him at first base. Uh, you can move him kind of all over. Yeah. I know we have Lamont Wade, I, I would not let that stand in the way of bringing in a guy like Cody Bellinger personally, but you know, he didn't rule out bringing in an outfielder or even trading another of our current crop of outfielders. So, you know, we'll see, but he like he said he likes the internal options. Take anything that Zaidi says with a grain of salt, quite frankly, but that is something he brought up today. And I do appreciate that they got they moved one of these outfielders because really Matos and Ramos were going to just be rotting away in Sacramento for another year with the, the crop they had currently up. So we'll see kind of where they go from here, but it does help with that. And that's part of why I think this is a good, you know, this is a good deal because it's not, it's not just what you might get back in Robbie Ray. It's also what, 
moving these guys does for what you have on your roster and creating opportunities for young players that, you know, the, the Giants really have to at some point stop kicking the can down the road and actually let some of these young guys play. And this will help with the, accomplishing that. So I do like that part of this deal. Um, kind of where do they go from here? Um, it, it sounds like they're not really interested in the top of the market. So you can probably just cross off their name for Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery. Um, those guys are probably going to be, they're, they're probably going to be out on those too. Um, Snell, I have a feeling that, you know, the way Zaidi's operated, I just don't think he was ever going to go with that long term of a deal. And being a Boris guy, Boris is probably looking for seven, eight years for Blake Snell. And I have a feeling that Zaidi was just not at all interested in going that far for him. Um, it sounds like they're still in on Shota Imanaga. So we'll see there if they end up getting him. Something to keep in mind with Imanaga, he has his deadline for his posting is January 11th, which means he has to be signed. Like they have to be finalized. The deal has to be finalized by the 11th. It's not just like agree with someone or he ends up going back to Japan. So I would imagine his decision comes in the next day or two because, you know, yeah, they still got to do a physical and everything there. So I would imagine that we're going to hear um, where he's going in the next day or, you know, the next day or two. Um, beyond that, there's a lot of rumors that they're really close on a guy like Matt Chapman. It, you know, if they add him, we'll see what kind of deal he gets. I'm not a huge proponent of getting a guy like Matt Chapman for $25 million a year, but you know, we'll see. And I've always liked him as a player though. So if they bring him in, I'll be happy to root for him at least. Um, kind of where the Giants payroll currently stands. Uh, their payroll at the moment is $148.5 million. The competitive balance tax payroll stands at $182.3 million. Now, I was using Track. I don't see the $6 million that they're sending back to Seattle. I'm not sure. I think that probably factors in. So that number very well could be $188.3 million. Um, which would leave them about 48.7 million under the competitive balance tax. So, you know, me, if you can get Chapman at 25 million, um, you know, that still leaves you about 23 or almost $24 million in space. You know, something to factor in with a guy like Chapman is if you, if you get Chapman, I could basically guarantee you that JD Davis gets traded somewhere. So that's going to end up freeing up another, you know, almost $7 million. He's estimated to get 6.9 in arbitration. So, you know, if you, if you do get Chapman, you're going to send, end up sending off almost $7 million after that. So really you're only adding like 18 million to your payroll. If you go sign a guy like Matt Chapman. So we'll see kind of where it stands um, there because they could potentially make two big moves. And, you know, really with the pitching market, I mean, the Giants really need pitching, but the market out there is not good. It's the starting pitching market. It's a bunch of flawed pitchers. I like Imanaga. That's a guy they might, you know, they could potentially still bring him in. So we'll see there. But beyond him, your best option might be a guy like Marcus Stroman at this point with what's off the board. Um, the trade market, it seems like Burns is, you know, fixed on going to free agency after the year. So that's a massive risk. And I'd imagine the Brewers aren't going to just trade him for nobody. So, you know, you're going to have to give up a big name. And I, I just don't think they should for a guy that's seems to be completely closed off to the prospects of signing, signing an extension. So beyond him, you can go with Shane Bieber, who's had a bunch of issues and drop off in performance last couple of years. His stuff has been dropping his case per nine have been going down every, you know, significantly the last couple of years. He's only 28 and he has two more years, I think under contract, but that's a big risk given what he'll, he'll still end up costing. Um, you can go the Dylan Cease route who, you know, I don't know if he was like tipping pitches or something last year, his stuff and his, outlying numbers were still really good or his peripheral numbers 
but his ERA like went almost double from the year before. So we'll see with Dylan Cease. Uh, he's also going to be very expensive to acquire. Uh, but if they did go that route, I mean, I think that's probably the best on the trade market. So, you know, the other thing the Giants could do is they were 14th in run, runs allowed last year with give, with the most errors in baseball defensively. So, you know, maybe you go get Chapman and then you also go get Cody Bellinger and just go all in on having an elite defensive team. Because, you know, you look at those and the team that finished eighth, which was the Cleveland Guardians last year, only gave up 22 less runs. So, I mean, their pitching isn't outstanding by any stretch, but they could easily make a jump into the top seven, eight, just by getting much better defensive performance and then a little bit of growth out of the young players. So we'll see kind of where they go from there. But hopefully this is kind of the first of several big moves that are coming. I don't get the impression that this is going to be the only big move they make. Um, I think there's at least going to be another one coming. Frankly, they need to make like two more at least to feel solid about a playoff chance because this I don't think this move really helps them win more games in 2024. Uh, it might help them win in October if they can get that far, but I don't think this move is really a 2024 move. This is more for the future, um, if anything. So uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, ask questions in the comments or on Twitter. Handle is at EYD show. Uh, but other than that, I will catch you all next time.